deep etching with a path or with a pen tool. Uh, the last one we deep etched using layers, um, masks, or eraser tool. In this one we were using the pen tool. Uh, this is a tool we haven't addressed yet, um, and this is primarily the function of the tool to create a path or to create um, a, uh, a mask <coughs> that you can be used later. Um, generally, you can you can create a channel here, a spot channel, using your uh, your pen tool too. But today we're going to be using it to create a path such as this. Um, you can see the path, and just told my control key in to change my uh, pen tool to a, a selection tool. And there you see my path running around this item. Um, what a path allows you to do is to select that area and uh, change the picture from a home photograph to something more professional. So it's just cleaner and neater. Looks like it's been done in a real professional studio. Um, and this is how you deep etch products without a shadow on it. Um, so going back to the original one, we'll turn that one off. Um, how we, we start, this is zooming a bit. When it comes to deep etching, I always prefer to use at least 100%, usually between 203%, uh, 203%, 300 300%, um, just to make sure you can see the edge of that pixel. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out preferably within the edge. If you miss it, you end up with a bit of a white line around your product, which isn't what you want, especially if you're going to be putting this on a different background. Um, <coughs> so how you'd work it is you just basically click to make a point, and uh, you'd move up to the next point and click. If you click and hold in, it allows you to then extend those points and drag it. So let me just show you. If I click, it'll create a straight line, which is cutting off that curve. Uh, if I undo that and I click and hold, then I drag my mouse and then creates little handles. As I pull these handles, I can then adjust how that curve is going to uh, be affected. So I want to run on that line there. If I hold my Alt button in, it lets me move these little handles independently. So now I can move this guy without adjusting both of them. Uh, this without the alt button. If I hold the alt button in, let's get this lined up. Hold the alt button in. I can then line this up and get it ready for the next little bump going around like that. Okay, so I can move this back up here. With this curve already been pulled, if I click here, it's going to already start curving it, but I want to curve it a little bit more so I can pull this one a little bit as well. Hold the alt button in, line it up with the next point, and click. Hold the alt button in because I don't want to affect the line I've just made. I can pull just a single arm out for the next curve. Holding the shift button in, I can then scroll my uh, copy board down so I can see the rest of my picture. Oftentimes it's easiest to hide all these palettes because you aren't really using anything for quite some time while you're busy creating this path. Um, so a shortcut to hide your, your palettes and your windows is tab. If you hit tab, it takes everything out, gives you the full window to work in, which is really handy uh, when it comes to deep etching. So moving on to the next point, I'm going to click and drag, and just to speed things up, I'm just go through this. As I said, pre preferably you would want to cut out, see it kind of bulges a bit there, but I'm not too worried about that, it'll still look natural if I carry on straight, um, rather than ending up with something that's including background in there, you don't want that background white in there. Um, what I've done there is I've actually just held in my... Uh, control or command button to get the selection tool which helps me rather than having to push tab and go back to my selection tool here and then go and select and then go back here and change my pen tool and come back and put another pen in. if I push my tab and hide everything just by using my shortcuts I can jump between tools and it makes it a lot more uh, quick and effective um, this tool this uh, funny arrows here lets me basically pull new use little arms out here. So um, in the instance where uh, I've clicked and I've dragged and I've, I haven't used my alt button, if I now, now use my control button to adjust, it's going to adjust both sides of this circle, which is not what I want because I, I forgot to click alt and then drag to adjust independently. So if I haven't done that and I've released it by accident and I want to now change it, but then I end up affecting both sides. 
I can hold in my Option or my Alt button, gives me this funny little arrow on it. That'll then force uh, the, the little arm to move independently. So I can still do that as well. Um, as I, I go around here, um, for instance, uh, this is pulled too far, I can then pull it back and line it up. Um, if I've gone on a big curve, say I want to do this whole curve here, and I select right down here, I'm going to be brave, and I'm going to pull this right from here. Um, I've used an option button, I separate them, and I come back and I pull this handle in here, and I see, well, this isn't really working out. Um, I need something else happening over here, because I'm never going to get this to fit in here. It's just not going to work. There's just too many variables. If I line it up here, then it's not lined up here, and it's I need something else. And what I can do is I can leave it as it is. If I go over this line with the pen tool, you'll see a little plus sign will appear. It means I can add a point in there. So if I click there and I drag, I can then hold my Alt button in and set those independently. And using my, my Command or Control button to use the Select tool, I can then click on that whole node. And I can move that whole point and realign that to a specific place. So I can add a point in and readjust it just to get a perfect curve that I'm looking for. Okay, so if you if you have a bit enough more you can chew, you can actually go back and add more points in there. Um, right now I've gone down the wrong side, I'm actually supposed to go straight on this. So using my select tool, control command button held in, I select that point and I just hit delete. Um, be careful not to hit delete twice, you have deleted the path. I shouldn't do undo. And the moment you hit delete, all these other items are selected because it shows the solids. If I just click off it and I click on that top that bar there, the selected tool, the selected node is solid, whereas the others have got empty little squares in them, which means I'm just going to select that one. Watch if I delete this one, they'll all become solid again. So if I hit delete again, it's going to delete the entire path. So just be careful. Undo, Control Z or Command Z to undo. Okay, so now they're all selected. Now you get a funny little box with two co two edges on it when I put the, the square over there. If I just click now, it's going to create a new path. It's not connected to anything, which is not what I want. Um, I want to add to that path, so I'm going to delete that node there. I'm going to go back to this one here, and I'm going to click. The moment it shows that box with two stripes in it, it means I'm going to add to this path. So I click on there, and then it allows me to continue with my path from where I was. Okay, so spacebar to bring up the hand tool. Scrolling, I'm creating this path all around here. Okay, and just for time constraints, let's just say I've got all around here. Uh, I've gone around this whole tube. I've done all these little zigzags, and uh, coming up to the end here, and you'll see I get a little, a little O or a, a circle, illustrating that I'm about to close off this path. If I click on this last node or the first node that I made, it's going to join the last and the first together. So I click there and it's finished it off. So I can go back here and I can uh, line that up. There we go, nicely done. Okay, so once I've done that, I can push Tab, bring my, my Windows back. And I go over to the Paths tab here. Just remember, if I mention something and you can't find it anywhere, always can go up to your Windows here, and the moment you select it, it will jump to that window. Um, or it will bring it up, open it somewhere. So if it's in one of these tools here, for example, uh, I've shown you your brushes. Um, and if you right click on your window, it'll bring up brush options. The other place where it brings up brush options is here. It's got also brush options here. So you can change all your brush presets and brush options here in this window too. So if, if you can't find that and you go to your window and you say brushes or brush, brush presets, it'll then open that window for you and it'll remind you, oh yes, this is where it is. So if you get lost, just remember you can go up to your window here and you can access all your, your palettes. Uh, from this window. Okay, so I am looking for the paths one. Here I am down here. This work path is the one I've just created, um, which is one I'm not going to use because, uh, well, if I zoom out, you'll see it hasn't deep edged the entire thing, it's just a portion. <laughs> but just for the sake of time, uh, I've just finished it off to show you how to finish it off. So when you've completed your path, it'll then create a little layer here under the paths and it'll be called work path. There you'll rename it, double click on it, and it'll bring up a little window so you can rename it, and I normally call it Deep Edge. Uh, once again, this is on this logo. 
Okay, deep edge. <coughs> Let's call it deep edge two, since I already got a deep edge one there. Deep edge two. Okay. So that's the. It'll, it's now saved that path there. So if I click off of it, I can carry on with my editing and everything until I'm done. And then when I want to load my my path again, I just click on that and it'll reload that path. Now, what's the point of loading it if you can't do anything with it? So this is where I'm going to show you what to do. Um, let's pretend that this deep edge path is the one that I've completed. I'm not going to use deep edge 2. I'm actually going to delete that one. And this is the one we've drawn with our pen tool. Uh, it goes all the way around everywhere in here. Um, you'll notice places like this where it's not on the outside. You've completed the whole deep edge around the outside, but you've missed spots like this. You can go back to the pen tool and so long as this is selected, you can add to that that deep edge or that, that path. Um, you add that piece in there and then when you create your selection, it's going to select that inside there as well. Okay, so we have our deep edge path. Now the trick is to select it and go to File, Make Selection. The moment you click this, you'll see those little running ants running around. Uh, your feather radius is how many pixels around it you want uh, to select. Basically, you want to select. You want to select exactly on the path, so you say zero pixels, and it's going to create a little selection exactly on that path. So now that selection is selecting the actual product itself. Um, if I select inverse, let me just zoom out. Control or Command zero. You'll see the selection runs around the background. So now I selected the background. If I say select inverse again, it's going to leave the background and just select the product. So depending on whether you want to copy this product out of here or delete the background out of here, it depends on which which selection you want. I'm going back to the layers. i uh, got my original image, so I can say select inverse. I just want to drop the background out, so I'm going to delete it. So I just hit the delete button and it's gone. Once again, the checkered background illustrating is transparent. There's nothing there. I can now delete, uh, deselect by pushing Control D or Command D to deselect, or select, deselect under your pull down menu. And now I can add this to another background. I can now open another file. Uh, let's go for the burger again. Let me open that up. And I can pull this image in. This Select uh, Control A or Command A to select all. Copy Command C or Control C, and we click select the image again, and we Control V or Command V, V for Vicky, and we'll paste it in. And now it's above our, our product, so we can click on that layer, drag it, click and drag below it, and release. And there we have our product, nicely deep etched, with a different background. I can move that around my background. And if I zoom in, you'll see it's got a nice clean edge to it. Um, there's no white showing anywhere. Uh, it's a good, a good deep edge, and it's nice and sharp. So the edge of that is very really sharp. Okay, so that's basically how you deep edge using a path. Um, Keep in mind, once I've moved my product, if I want to make a selection again and select my path, that path hasn't moved. So it's always advisable to do all your editing and everything before you create your path, if, uh, to, to realign this path again. Even if you take a selection tool and you drag over this, this path, and you try and line it up, it's going to be virtually impossible to get it exactly on that edge to move your path. So try and do your, your path last. Um, the reason I say do your, your path deep edge last is because uh, <coughs> you, you, there's other features or other functions for the path. Um, let me just undo a little bit here. Uh, if you have other editing software, um, you can uh, save this path in here as a TIFF, um, basically a flattened image, a TIFF or JPEG, uh, where there's no layers. So if, if you don't want to a PSD file, you can flatten this image. So OK. And I'm going to save this out. But the trick with the path though, is to click on the path and you say Clipping Path. So you go File, Clipping Path. 
and give it a flatness of about three pixels. This, this gives it kind of a, a bit of tolerance around this area. So I say OK. And it'll then create, I don't know if you noticed, let me create a new path here quickly. If I uh, click off this path and I create a new path, the name of the path is black. Even if I rename it here, uh, if I rename it, that name stays black. <coughs> Once this goes a clipping path, it shows like a little path around the, the text. That's showing you it's a clipping path. Uh, so that's the difference between clipping path and a normal path. So how a clipping path is useful, let's trash the piece out there, because now it's saved as a clipping path. Um, if I save this now, uh, file save as or control shift s, I'm going to put this on my desktop. I'm going to save it as a JPEG or as a TIFF. Um, I'll save it there. Okay, so now even though I uh, have this background still showing, if I bring this into another application, um, let's try it in design. Um, if I bring it to another application, it's actually going to bring it in as if it were a layer. So it's basically the clipping path is cutting everything out. So even though it's flattened and it's got a white edges on it, um, it is uh, going to be isolated. That uh, clipping path will isolate that product. I'll give you an illustration now as, <coughs> as soon as this opens up um, as to the use of this. Um, generally, uh, layer files are quite a bit bigger than a flattened image. So you would use a flattened image when you're doing your, make, your, your uh, page makeup. It's really useful for that. I'm going to create a new file. <coughs> uh, new document. And uh, I'm just going to make a little small A4 for now. Doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Okay. And uh, we're going to basically put this over or around text. So this is not really Photoshop, but it's just showing the use of um, doing your deep edge in certain ways. Depending on what the requirement for that deep edge is, would be kind of uh, what you would use it for. <coughs> um. so this is a way of adding text. There we go. Fill the placeholder text. Okay. I'm going to bring that picture in now, and uh, I'm going to place it on this document, and you'll see the difference between uh, 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 deep etched with a clipping path and deep etched without a clipping path. Um, what did I call that for? File spout path. Okay. There it is, JPEG, open, and drop it in. There we go. So load square it is transparent. And I can place it on text if I want to. Um, with this selected, I can even create a run around on it. Um, so it'll then run around that path. So wherever I move it, the text will then adjust itself uh, accordingly. Oops the box, not the image. Okay, so it, it helps a lot with layout. Um, so you can actually adjust the layout to fit around images too. Um, so it's very, very handy. Um, in contrast, if I uh, bring in the uh, original uh, deep etching spot, this is the PSD, the layer file. It should look the same. Um, let me change the layer file. Uh, where is it? File. I'm going to open the layer file and I'm going to save it without, well, I'm going to trash the, the clipping path. Okay, now let me flatten that. If I've deep etched it, 
without a, if, if I use a, uh, if I didn't use a clipping path, if I used a, a brush, I wouldn't have a path. And so that's what it would look like. It might look the same, um, but I, I wouldn't have. Uh, the only way to do it is is to uh, send it without the background to save it as a PSD. Um, if I delete, if I use a, a, a brush without a path, I'd have to save it as a PSD file, as a layer with a transparent background like that in order to get it into InDesign to look like that. Um, but usually you would be working with a flattened image. Um, Save as, and I'm going to stick it on the desktop too, and also call it JPEG, and make it number two, and save. <coughs> okay, so if I save this after I've deep etched it, I've got a nice team background. I bring it to my application that I'm using. <coughs> You'll see that it's got this square box around it, which isn't really what we want. Um, you can still work around it, I guess. Um, it's about two. Open. And we'll dump it in there. Okay, not quite as beautiful as the uh, clipping path one. Um, if I really want to, I can send it to the back, put it behind the text. Um, then I'd have to use this path tool anyway to create a path around my spout that I'd want to include. And then I'd have to put a path around that. Um, so that's, uh, I say it's much your choice, but uh, it's just quicker easier to do it that way around. So it's, like I said, there's millions of ways of skinning a cat. Um, so it's according to your preference, whether you're actually wanting an object in a box on a page or whether you're wanting uh, to have your text wrapping around it. If you don't want a box on the page, then that's how it'll have to work. And you, have to, you can still put your wrap around the box. Uh, it's just different effects for different outcomes. But the the easiest would be the clipping path for hard edge elements. Soft edge is a bit more difficult. Then you'd have to use a PSD to bring it in looking like this. Um, and that's about it for the uh, deep etching with the path. Um, just always remember to uh, remember to save this path in here. Um, if you don't have it in here, you can't reselect it again. And to do it last, you know, the moment you move that item, it's not going to line up with your path anymore. Okay, until next time. Good luck practicing that. <coughs>